Hi everybody, this is Sean, and today in this session on Google Drive, we're going to look at creating a Google document. Uh, Google Documents is similar to a lot of other word processing tools like Microsoft Word, in which you can type up a document, like for instance a letter, or a memo, or an agenda, and you can save it directly to Google Drive. So as we look through these tools, you're going to notice that some of the tools that you see are very similar to what you get on other word processing programs. But the difference is this is available anywhere you go because it is in your Google Drive folder. Now you'll notice whenever we, as we said before, want to create a new document, you just go to the top left of your screen and click Create. And we're going to choose Document. You'll notice whenever you create a new document, it opens a new tab. Uh, even though I'm in this tab on my Google Chrome browser where I can edit a document much like we would in Microsoft Word I can go back at any time and click on my Google Drive tab and see what's in my folders there. I'm going to go back to my Google document and from here like I said very similar to what you used to see in some older versions of Microsoft Word you have your menus across the top and you have a very basic toolbar which we're going to look at some of those tools right now and to do this though I need some somewhat of a basic document to work with so what we're going to do is we're going to hit our magic button here and I'm going to create a document in QuickTime so that you don't have to wait on me boom there it is a quick document that we can edit so that you didn't have to wait on me to type it in and the first thing that we're going to look at uh, this is obviously a uh, short document that talks about tutoring hours so it'll help us kind of go through some of these tools the first thing I really want to do with this is I would like to apply a style to the top the header where it says virtual academy tutoring hours so I'll just click to highlight and then at the top where it says normal text I can choose from my styles um, there are several preset styles I'm going to choose heading one then of course if I wanted to I could have chosen my font type um, it defaults to Arial in most cases, but you can choose others. Uh, the size, I can make it bold, italicized, or underlined, so on and so forth. Next, I want to add an image. You do have the option of inserting objects into your document. Uh, to insert an image, you just go to the Insert menu, choose Image, and you have the option of either dragging an image onto the page or I can click to choose an image to upload and I'm just going to choose a, a simple little image that we use for our virtual school um, just a little laptop with our logo on it click up open and it uploads straight to the document so we can resize and it's not exactly where I want it so right now where it says wrap text I can click and change it from inline with the text to wrap text so that I can move it anywhere I want to on the page and it just wraps the text around the, the image. Here in the bottom I've listed that students can email our teachers so I would like to turn that into a link so what I'm going to do is highlight math tutoring and I'll go to the top and hit insert link and in this case it's going to be an email address little hint about email addresses if um, if you want a, a link to be used as an email you can just type mail to colon and the email address and there you go it's a hyperlinked item now but it's also an email address and I can do that to the rest of these so let me go ahead and do that and of course obviously those were not real email addresses I just did those for the sake of the demo so that's very simple um, just highlight your text go to insert and then choose link and you can put a web address in there you can put in an email address whatever you want to um, next we're gonna look at some of the other tools uh, I'm gonna drop down a line here because I'm gonna actually delete this after I do it but if you were using this process to create a math worksheet or uh, something that students would be working on in math obviously there is the equation tool and I can open up the equation editor so that I can add in some of the more useful symbols that you can't find on your keyboard but you might need to use for math so I can insert math symbols uh, functions and you know brackets anything that I need a radical symbol if I was doing square root 
Um, plenty of tools to choose from there. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that toolbar simply by just clicking somewhere else on the document. So, you know, it, it, you notice my box disappeared. So, and these tools are washed out now. If I wanted a new equation later, that toolbar is still open, and I can just click New Equation. You also have the option of in adding a drawing. If you click Insert Drawing, it pulls up a palette where you can choose from line tools, shape tools, you can add text, images, and then just go from there. You also have the option of putting in a table. Instead of listing, tutoring list above as I did, I could have done a table if I'd wanted to and listed times. And so I just choose how many cells I want and I could have put math and then 11.15 to 12 o'clock and so on and so forth. If you make a mistake at any time, like say for instance, I like my list up above, it's got my days, I'm good with it, I could just change it into a bulleted list later, and I don't want to use this table, you can always hit undo at the top left, and just click undo until you've gone back as far as you want to go. You also have the option of hitting redo if you have made a mistake and you want to put it back. And then finally, the last thing in the insert menu that we're going to look at are um, special characters. If you look at the special characters section, you know, again, in the keyboard, maybe there's something that you want, but it's not there on the keyboard. And so you can choose from all sorts of different special character menus, uh, punctuation, for instance, and it gives you some of the basic punctuation functions. Those, most of those are available on the keyboard, but there's some that aren't, and you can put those in there. Now as far as this toolbar at the top here, just underneath the menus, you do see a lot of familiar tools here. Um, obviously if I wanted to do math in bold, I could highlight the word and hit bold. Um, or I can italicize, underline, I can change the text color. But let's say for instance I have several things to apply to each of these. Like I want math to be bold, italicized, and I also want it to be in blue. But you don't want to have to click on each of these and do that over and over and over for each of those items. So I'll click on math after I've gotten it the way I want it. And then choose the paint format. And then highlight what I want altered. And it alters science in the same way that math was altered. And I can just continue to do that with each of these pieces by clicking on the paint tool. And then highlighting. You do have to place your cursor on the format that you want to copy first, then click the paint roller, and then highlight the item that you want to apply that effect to. Very simple. Now with this list here, with the days of the week that we have tutoring hours, I'd like to make that a bulleted list so I can highlight. And at the top of the page, uh, from our familiar tools up here, I could choose a bulleted list. Uh, they do give the the option of choosing from several different bullet types in case you want to change something. Um, I also could have chosen a numbered list if it was a numbered list that I wanted to do. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to this email list as well. And there you go. Now there's also a wealth of other tools in here that you might be used to using in other word processing tools. For instance, if you wanted to check for spelling like say for instance I spelled the word hours wrong okay two R's okay now obviously it's gonna tell me I have spelled it wrong by placing a red line underneath it and I could right click on that and it says did you mean hours but let's say for instance that goes totally unnoticed I've done the entire document I wanna check to make sure that I haven't misspelled other things in the document maybe it's like a two or three page document and it's a lot to review so I can go to the tools section and I can click spelling and it will scan and it says there we go. Hours is spelled wrong. And change hours to hours. So I hit change. An additional tool that I found very helpful inside here is also under the tools section. And it's called research. And you notice it's already popped up over here on the right. Uh, research very simply allows you to, while you're working inside your Google document, click in the search bar and it will use Google. So you can find information, quotes, as it says down here in our explanation, or any other citations that you want to put into your document, and then you can quickly put them into your document. 
So that's a very cool extra addition that you probably wouldn't find in other tools. You also have the option of translating the document. One of the uh, interesting situations that we had pop up recently is that we have a Russian student in our building and the student speaks no English whatsoever and the teacher needed to be able to translate her documents into a language that her student could understand. So and I'll go up to tools and I'll choose translate document and it, instead of modifying this document it's actually going to create a copy of this document in the language that I want so I don't have to worry about you know copying and pasting and moving everything around it's just going to take this document change it to the language I want so I'll scroll down here and I'll find Russian and it's going to translate that document into Russian and I click translate if I want to change this um, I don't want it to say translated copy of the untitled document I could choose Russian copy tutoring hours and then hit translate it opens up a new tab there's my translated document it's now in a language that my student can understand and if we were to close that document it's automatically saved to my Google Drive and if I click back to my Google Drive tab a Russian copy of my tutoring hours document right here very very nice I'm going to go back to my untitled document and in addition like I've already said just previously everything that you do here there is no necessarily a need to hit save as because everything that you do as you can see right here all changes are saved in drive um, everything's backed up every every once in a while so that as you type it creates a backup in case say for instance your your browser crashes or your computer crashes everything that you've been doing is automatically saved back to drive in case something happens even though I haven't even titled the document and that's the next thing that we're going to talk about before I leave here I'll need to rename this document otherwise it will be saved in Google Drive as untitled document now I do have the option of going back to Google Drive later on and I can rename the document there inside my file folders but for now if I just put my mouse over untitled document I can click rename it brings up a rename dialog box and I can change it to tutoring hours and I change that and click OK so now you'll see up here at the top it's been changed to tutoring hours and I can click back to Google Drive if I, if I want to okay so here as you can see inside Google Drive I have the two documents I just created I have tutoring hours and I have Russian copy tutoring hours if I click on any of those documents it will reopen a new tab go back into the document so I can see it again and you'll notice at the top right this is something that's really interesting about Google Drive and Google Documents. If I click share, I have the ability of sharing a link to this document with someone else. And I also have the ability of sending an email to them and it will email the link directly to them. By sharing your documents with other people, it also gives them the ability to edit the document. And if you'll notice up here on our, to our toolbar, you can click insert comment and they can type in comments that they have like for teachers for instance if you had students putting documents on Google Drive in a shared folder then you could as a teacher go in and click insert comments and allow grading or comments for grading to be placed inside the document well like I said that's all for now um, in the next section we'll talk about Google presentation and you'll learn a little bit about how to create presentations that can be shared on the web similar to PowerPoint. Thanks for joining me.